Ladies and gentlemen, in the United States, we see that the funding of scientific research is actually a vital and integral part of the healthcare. Because the state recognizes that research and the development of new medicines and new cures is something important. It believes that in terms of controlling what's going to happen with these new developments and what's going to happen, especially in terms of the use, in terms of price, we think the state feels it has the greatest stake in ensuring these citizens get and access these medicines and these services as best as possible. That's why we think it's an inherent harm to provide a monopoly of um, private companies, such as pharmaceutical companies, to fund scientific research and allow them to patent these generic drugs in itself, which we think is inherently harmful because to harm the people on the ground who should actually be availing of these services. That's why we believe that we stick with state funding. But then funding of these researches will be included in the healthcare package. And then you even have grants for NG from NGOs and from non-profit organizations like cancer groups or whatnot. And the, sta and the standards are simple. Number one, what is the state responsibility as far as uh, addressing this concern regarding the drugs and how it do, does reach the people. And second, which in itself do we uphold the best accountability, especially with the, uh, with the patenting of these drugs to begin with. Um, First of all, let's talk about the state's role to make sure that there's a controlled factor in the basic services that has attached to reach its people as best as possible. First plan, let's talk about the idea of a patent. Because I think a patent is a copyright over a specific item that can be, some, that can be something discovered, newly produced, or something improved. We think a patenting is actually tantamount to owning property. Or an individual or the group who patents a certain drug or patents a certain item can control the price, can do, uh, can use it for whatever means possible. And we think it's up to the discretion of that individual with the patent. For example, if scientists went to Africa and they found this rare plant, and they suddenly synthesized a natural herb out of it, we think they're able to patent that, and we think that the use and production of that, and the, the, the selling of that um, item in itself, will be determined by that group of researchers, by that group of discoverers to begin with. So we say, what do these scientific researchers do right now in the laboratories? Um, this, this is not, not talking about the pharmaceutical companies. We think that these researchers right now, in this context of this debate, will be developing these genetic drugs. For example, paracetamol, for example, these genetic drugs that uh, haven't been discovered yet, that's why they're still developing it. Now, what do these pharmaceutical companies do? They necessarily fund these researchers and tell them to, to develop this kind of generic, and they necessarily buy, um, or actually wait, these pharmaceutical companies buy these generics and they necessarily turn them into branded medicine. For, um, for example, in the Philippines, when you have paracetamol, you can turn it into biogenic or tempera. And the, that's what these pharmaceutical companies do. They market up and they decide to make these um, generics into branded. So we say, what happens when these companies fund researchers? We think that these, uh, these companies are able to provide and necessarily bestow their patent over that generic. Because we think that when a generic is produced by researcher A, we think that this drug is patented by that pharmaceutical company. Therefore, the price of the generic and what's going to happen to the generic is up to this company to begin with. Now, I will be why first and foremost, why this itself is bad before I move on. Yes. First of all, these companies still use the, 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 these drugs to the public at the end of the day, and we say that the government controls the price of these No, we think that they do not control the price, which in itself that's the principle of that patent. We think that, say, the government intervening is highly hampered because of that patent itself, because of that research to begin with. You cannot say the state will have a stake if these companies decide to privatize that and decide to control that patent to begin with. So we say, why is this bad? Because first of all, we think there's an inherent unfair monopoly. Because say, nothing will stop these companies from making these patents expensive. Why? First of all, we want to portray and these, um, paint, paint a picture of these pharmaceutical companies as profit-oriented. We think that a higher original cost of these generics means a higher selling price to begin with because that markup will necessarily be increased exponentially. And second, in terms of other pharmaceutical companies who want to avail of that generic, we think they can also control that price and monopolize and abuse, especially with how they, they feel that that other company is a competition or not. So we think even the developing of uh, development of other countries with that expensive generic will be hampered because it will force other companies to necessarily make their branded items more expensive. And second, third of all, we think that accountability is low because we think that these companies believe that there's a high demand for these medicines anyway. That's why pharmaceutical companies can necessarily make it expensive and they don't mind it because they know people will eventually buy it. And that in itself, because you cannot hold them for that, we think that in itself is an inherent part. Because we say that because even we say that even in the slight chance that it's cheap, first of all we question the likelihood because I already paid that picture. Second we think this we question the commensurability because we think there's no accountability, we think we can't open it to that much risk. And finally 
form. And so not even when the state buys these generics. Because if they the state buys generics and the child puts it in the generics pharmacy, when it's available to the Nasari citizens, um, citizens at any date. But we think that the state buys generics, nothing will stop these companies from making the original price and cost and of the generics expensive. Therefore, we think that on the ground, the state has no choice but to provide, this, uh, provide the people with that cost that's actually more expensive simply because of the fact that uh, that company takes state dictates to be so. And we think that that's necessarily harmful. That's why, second, I'll talk to you about the role of the state. Because we think the state is there to provide accessibility for basic services and needs. And it feels that necessarily if the people are able to access, uh, access it better and access it cheaper and in a better way, we think that that's what's best, especially when we're talking about health the government wants to uphold health as best as possible. First of all, let's talk about that the state has a natural incentive. Because you think that the state is directly accountable to people and it's letting in a promise based on the social contract to ensure that the health services and its health care package in itself will be beneficial as possible. That means cheaper medicines for people, that means um, be better, a better development of medicines at that date. But we think this will not happen if you have a monopoly of companies. Fine, maybe not every single researcher out there will be monopolized. But we think, now that there are, we think that these genetics produced in itself will still be part of the state, however it will be more expensive. That's why we think that if the state funds and controls these patents, we think that the state will be able to make it cheaper. Because we think that number one, production costs are not little. Right now, when companies necessarily um, provide uh, necessarily patent their own things, they actually sell it, but they set market up as such that they triple the production cost and put it as the price of that medicine. However, when the state patents it, they necessarily give it to these people at its cost with very little markup to begin with. Because the state that is accountable given that it has to uphold its healthcare, uh, has to uh, stay through this principles, especially with making healthcare and then making medicines cheaper. And second, even on the level of genetics pharmacies, we think that these pharmacies will be inherently cheaper because right now the government will be controlling these generics. And now it can able to um, distribute it to the citizens as is, we tell you there will not be any sort of profit oriented nor bias, especially with um, marking off the price of that medicine. So we think that that is, is itself a good thing for the government. And finally, we think that this principle is simple. But there isn't a certainty of monopoly, but we think that the state always errs on the side of caution. If you cannot allow this risk to happen, especially if you're dealing with a very big state of how people will be able to afford that medicine and itself take care of themselves and itself take care of their health. So we think that even this is not just because you have other ways of providing money for these researchers. The government has these tax and this this money for the healthcare package. And we think that given that these avenues are still there, then you shouldn't um, have these companies provided well. Because of that, 